The next sorting algorithm that I'm going to look at is called an insertion sort. Uh, the algorithm for this is fairly straightforward. Um, there's a few there's a few interesting things about it. What we take what we do is we look at this first element and consider it sorted. That's been sorted for now. This is our sorted part of the list, and in this case, this will change. But the list is going to get sorted from smallest to largest this way. So rather than doing it the other way and bubbling up or selecting the largest and putting it at the end, um, we're going to select the smallest and put it at the start. That's just the way I'm going to run this algorithm. It could be done the other way around. I could put the largest at the end and work back that way. I prefer to work from uh, your left to right. So looking at this here, that part of the list is the sorted part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a grab at this second one here. And what I need to do is figure out where it, where it sits or where I should insert it in the sorted part of the list. So I take this and I compare it to the 7. The 7 is greater than the 6, so I need to do a swap. This goes to here. That goes to there. There's nothing else to compare it to. So now I consider everything on that side sorted. 6 and 7 are in the right order. Six is less than seven, so even if uh, there was another number in there, six and a half maybe, for the time being, that is sorted, that part of the list. So you'll see here, I put the, uh, look at the three, I get the next element in the list. I compare it to the seven, and I say, the three needs to go before the seven. Then I compare it to the six, and the 3 needs to go before the 6. Since there's nothing else to compare it to, I then insert the 3 before the 6 and consider that part of the list sorted. Now what you might have seen here, I've currently made two swaps and um, probably about three comparisons and already the list is half sorted. Now this works, what, what insertion does is it works really fast at the start because it's only checking a few elements. As it gets further and further and the sorted list gets bigger and bigger, it starts to take a bit longer. However, because it will stop, and you'll see in a minute, it will stop um, when the, the algorithm finds where the next number goes, it doesn't compare it to the rest of it like the selection sort. So I get the 5. This is the one I'm currently comparing. The 5 is less than the 7. It needs to be inserted before the 7. The 5 is less than the 6. It needs to be inserted before the 6. I compare the 5 to the 3 and see that it is greater than the 3, so it needs to be inserted after the 3 and before the 6. I consider that part of the list sorted. Because I didn't need to compare it with anything on the other side that way, even if there was a 1 or 2, etc., it wouldn't have to compare it to it because it knows it's greater than 3. It's not going to go anywhere further down that end. I get the 1. I compare it to the 7. I know that it needs to go before the 7. I compare it to the 6. I know it needs to go before the 6. I compare it to the 5. I know it needs to go before the 5. I compare it to the 3. I know it needs to go before the 3. That part of the list is sorted. Finally, I get the 2. This is my current number for comparison. It needs to go before the 7. It needs to go before the 6. It needs to go before the 5. It needs to go before the 3. So I insert it here. And then there's no more elements left that are unsorted. The list is considered sorted. And you can see that it is 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. Those are in uh, numerical order and so the algorithm is effective, it works, I've tested it, um, it comes up with the right result. So it's always important to test an algorithm as well, make sure that what you're actually doing is working and um, that you haven't made a mistake in there somewhere. What I'd actually like you to do with this one is count the number of comparisons that I made. I only made six swaps in total or six inserts and I made a number of comparisons but I think you'll find that the number of comparisons uh, was still less than 15. 
So it, will, it was less than the number in the bubble sort, it was less than the number in the selection sort. So if you look at the, the questions that are going to go with these videos or below in the, the video section, um, in the comment section, not the comment, the description, uh, there's some questions there for you to consider. Um, you might like to turn these instructions that I've, I've talked about into informal instruction uh, for your external task um, and, and discuss how effective the algorithm is. This is only quite a small set of data, so what you could do is look at some visualizers online, uh, some tools that are going to count comparisons for you, especially for data entry of you know 100 up to 1,000 maybe. I think I've seen a few that do 1,000. Uh, any more than that, and you might be sitting there waiting for a long time, especially with the online visualizers, since they're updating things, and they're usually on a uh, timer, rather than doing it as fast as possible, which the computer would do in an implemented program, and it will kind of let you see what's actually happening, so it slows it down a bit, but it does take a bit more time. So that is the insertion sort. We find where the next element is meant to be inserted in the sorted part of the list, insert it there and then continue to check until we don't have any elements left that are considered unsorted. The next video is going to be on the quick sort and I'll need a few more uh, elements of data for this so I'm going to use some miniatures for that and um, we'll have a look at that one in the next moment.